Welcome back to my channel, In Flight Music. My name is Ian, and in today's tutorial, I want to show you five reverb tricks that you absolutely need to know here in FL Studio. And if you're looking for more FL Studio and music production tips and tricks, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you are notified every time I make a new video. So right here, I have FL Keys loaded up, just its stock default settings, and we're just going to lay down a quick piano track. And I'm going to go in here and quantize this real quick. Control A, Control Q, and we are now quantized. So for my first tip, I want to show you how to add a more unique sound to your instruments and how to create interesting atmospheres. So most people tend to load their reverbs right there on the instrument track, right here on the insert. But instead of doing that, what I recommend is loading your reverb on an insert send instead. So right here, if you've seen my previous tutorials with my workflow tutorial or my free FL Studio template, you'll know that I have all my sends over here on the right. But to create your own send, what you would do, you would go to whatever track you want to use a send on and you would select route to this track or you could just left click and it will route that to that track. So here I have Fruity Reverb loaded. Let's go ahead and turn this on. And you'll notice that I have my dry signal turned all the way down and my wet signal all the way up. And basically what that's done, that's allowed us to have this dry piano signal here and have our wet reverb signal completely separate from each other. Which means we could go into this reverb track and actually add coloration and variation to this reverb without affecting the piano itself. So let's just go ahead and take a listen to what this reverb sounds like as is. Okay, so now that we have this reverb on its own track, what we can do, we could go into the track and add coloration to it. So I'm actually gonna load up Fruity Fast Distortion and what we're gonna do, we're gonna create a lo-fi type atmosphere around our piano. So I'm gonna turn down this threshold, turn down this mix, and then we're gonna turn down the post and then we'll just increase the post output until we get the reverb sound that we're looking for. And I'm also gonna switch this over to B because we get a lot more distortion with the B setting. So if we had this reverb on the piano track along with this distortion, this distortion would be distorting the entire piano and you would end up with a bit of a mess. But now we just have this atmosphere that's distorted instead. And then from there, you could add things like EQ. And then you could add additional plugins that you normally wouldn't add if you had this reverb on the actual piano itself. So you could go in, add a flanger, you could add chorus, you could add a phaser, you could add stereo shaping plugins. There's a whole lot more that you can do when you have the reverb on its own track to where you could really shape the atmosphere. So hopefully that will inspire you to create different atmospheres and textures around the sounds that you already have. So for this next technique, I'm actually going to turn this off and we are going to add a reverb on top of our piano and we're going to turn the dry setting all the way down and reset the wet setting so that it's at 100%. We're going to add a little bit of stereo separation, increase the high cut, increase the low cut and increase the decay and da dampening so that we have these high signals or high frequencies extend out a little bit longer. And let's just take a listen to what this sounds like. Then from there on our piano track, hit Control and E, and that'll bring up Edison. And then we're just gonna bring Edison right underneath our reverb, hit record on our input, and we are going to record this signal into Edison. 
and let's hit play. And then from there, we're gonna hit this button right here, which trims the side noise, and we're left with a perfect sample, and we're going to drag this into our playlist, and we're gonna go into the sample, and we are going to reverse this, and that will allow us to use this as a transition effect. Now, typically, when I do this, I like to just use one bar of this. I'll cut the rest of this out, and now we have a nice little reverb transition that goes into our piano. And also with your reverb settings, switch this back to dry and adjust the wet signal however you'd like. And now this is what we have. So for this next trick, we're going to load up FL Studio's Patcher directly onto our piano insert. And inside Patcher, we're gonna load up Fruity Stereo Shaper and we are going to select the left right splitter and then we're going to clone this by right clicking and select save preset as, drag it over here and route this. And then inside the second one, we're going to copy this setting, paste it here on the right slider, copy this setting and paste it here on the left slider. So now we have a left signal and a right signal. So right now I have the right muted. We should just hear the left. And then here, we just hear the right. And this will allow us to make a psychoacoustic effect with Fruity Reverb. So let's load up two Fruity Reverbs, link this. And once again, I'm going to copy and paste this here, link this. And what this will allow us to do, we could have two completely different reverbs on the left side and the right side, which will allow us to create a more lush atmosphere. So let's just go into the presets and choose two different settings. I'll have Cathedral on this left side, and then on this right side, let's use the venue. And then from there, you could actually use our first tip and go into each of these reverbs and color them differently add different effects, and that will create an even more exotic environment that sounds like it's evolving instead of just a static reverb over the entire track. But one thing that you might have noticed is how overpowering that reverb might be when you use this effect. So that leads me to this next tip, which is something that I recommend on even normal reverbs. And what you would do, you would go ahead and load up Fruity Peak Controller, and we're gonna move Peak Controller up to the top here with this Patcher Wet Dry Knob. We're going to right click, link this to controller. You could also do this with your send tracks as well. So keep that in mind. But we're going to use peak control peak from Fruity Peak Controller on our piano. Hit accept. And then I'm going to right click and copy this value and paste that onto the bass. Or you could have simply just turned the bass all the way up. And then we're going to turn this volume knob all the way down. And you'll notice inside of this window that Every time the piano hits, the reverb goes away and then it comes back in, which allows for cleaner hits on your instrument. So that basically just stops the reverb from bleeding into each transient of the next attack or hit of your instrument. Now this last trick is really powerful because it actually doesn't include Fruity Reverb 2 at all. And now what we're gonna do, instead of loading up Fruity Reverb 2, we're actually gonna load up Fruity Convolver. And what this is, it's a convolution reverb. And the difference between a convolution reverb and a normal reverb, convolution reverb works off of impulse responses. And an impulse response is actually a sample of an actual room or environment that is used to create more realistic, more lush sounding reverbs than Fruity Reverb 2. And in FL Studio, if you go into these presets, you'll see that it comes with quite a few different rooms and environments from exteriors to guitar cabinets, halls, real spaces, 
reverb devices, small rooms, and so on and so forth. Some of those might be some that I've added, but at the end of the day, there's definitely a lot to choose from here within FL Studio in terms of impulse responses for Fruity Convolver. But here's a bonus tip. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn off Fruity Convolver and I'm gonna load up one of my favorite old school reverbs, Epic Verb. And right now the wet signal is turned all the way up. So we're just listening to the reverb here. So now you know exactly what this reverb sounds like. Now we're gonna press Control and E on the same track and that brings up Edison. And inside of Edison, we're actually gonna record this reverb into Edison. And the way that we do that, we go back to Fruity Convolver. I'm gonna turn Epic Verb off. In Fruity Convolver, you'll notice this lightning symbol. When we click it, it's actually triggering an impulse. When we turn Epic Verb on, we're actually getting that impulse going through Epic Verb. And from there, we can record that into Edison and sample that reverb and just get rid of the excess here. And we could drag this into Fruity Convolver, normalize it. Now inside of Fruity Convolver, let's turn the dry all the way down so we're just listening to the reverb. And you'll have to increase this wet knob just slightly, somewhere around negative 16 dB, and that will be level matched with the original reverb. And let's once again listen to Epic Verb. And let's listen to Fruity Convolver. And you'll see they're the exact same reverb. And the advantage of that is now we don't have to use this entire reverb plugin to get the same reverb inside of Fruity Convolver, which is just basically using a sample. So it's less CPU. But on top of that, you can go out and demo other reverb plugins that you don't own. And you can actually send impulse responses through them, record them into Edison, and add them to your collection of different impulse responses here within FL Studio. And that will expand your collection of really lush sounding reverbs that you could use without breaking the bank. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.